Gary Scheffler, GLS, and I'm rocking with G Sports. So GLS is, is, is my initials. Um, it's Gary Lee Scheffler. It, it wasn't meant to be GLS. It was meant to be next level performance. Uh, when I registered the company with the state, there was next level performance, air conditioner company, next level performance. They had, they had a next level performance for everything. So the lady at the thing at, with, the, with the assessor's office was like, look, you need to go ahead and, and, and call it something like, you know, that, that'll kind of detail it more. And I'm like, well, just put GLS in front of it. So when it started getting a little more popular, the kids all just started saying, well, we're going to GLS. I trained at GLS, GLS, GLS. And it started to pop. So we went ahead and we just put the little running man on the end and it's GLS. Most kids don't even know what it means. <laughs> they come in and, and, and they, coach, which GLS? It's, it's something, go long speed or, or something <laughs> like that. Something to do with speed training. But that's, that's actually where GLS came from. It, it is my initials and that's how we developed the brand, I guess you could say. Uh, so I, did, I, didn't wanna, I didn't wanna call something my own name. I wanted it to be something else because I don't want anyone to be bigger than the brand, including myself. So, I guess about six years ago, five years ago, I started GLS. Um, I was fresh out of rehab. I'm a recovering drug addict, alcoholic. I've been sober over six years now. Uh, I got hurt playing ball, playing softball, trying to live out a fantasy, I guess, from when I was a, a kid or whatever. But um, I ended up getting hurt and uh, spiraled out of control, lost my family, lost everything that I had. Um, so after about 13 years of living my life that way, I, um, I decided that I, I had to make some changes and I went to rehab. I walked into rehab one day, basically emotionally bankrupt, <laughs> financially bankrupt for sure. Uh, pretty much homeless too. Uh, I was living in and out of a car, um, bounced around from friend's sofa to sofa, and had some people that really cared about me that tried to help me, but I, I just wasn't ready for the help. And uh, I, I remember s sitting down one day and uh, getting a call from my mother and my mother saying, Gary, we can't, we can't allow you to come here no more to, to see your child and, 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 and until you change your life. And you, you basically, we can't, we can't keep seeing you the way that you are. So I tried to live my life like that for about another month and, and finally I, I, I just uh, I remember sitting on the curb one day and my, I had a little prepaid phone. <laughs> and it's crazy how things happen because I ran out of minutes. <laughs> And I thought I was lonely until I couldn't call nobody. So um, it, it, it really hit me then. And uh, I knew I had to make some changes in my life. I had a background in coaching. Uh, my, my father was uh, an administrator for Jackson Parish's recreation department. So me and, and, and my sister and, 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 and our family was in that in sports. It, it, straight, straight, straight out of you know school, I started coaching. Um, I coached at Dale LaSalle High School for a little while. Uh, I ran a recreation department in, in Gretna for a little while. I coached JPRD West Bank All-Stars, won a world championship in 98. So I had a good foundation in, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the sports sports world, I guess you could say. Um, so when I, when I got the rehab and I actually got sober, I, I think that that athletic background really gave me that leadership quality, I, I guess you could say. So when I got into rehab, I did well. Um, I, I went to Odyssey House of, of Louisiana, and uh, it was it was no nonsense. Uh, my, my counselors over there, you know, there was no favoritism. I mean, you walk in there, I'm 30-something years old, and I got a 19-year-old kid in charge of me. And that was, a, you know, that was tough. That was, that was tough to handle, and it, and it basically broke me down. And, and it's not a 12-step program, it's a behavior modification program. So my behaviors have to change in order for me to adapt to their program. And I did well. Um, ended up finishing up Odyssey House. I did six months inpatient. And uh, I, 
got out of the program over there was, was sober. You know, I only had uh, December 9, 2010, I went into rehab. Uh, and, and I've never picked up another drug or alcohol since, since then. Um, I, I, when I got out, I didn't have, I guess you could say, any direction or anything. I, I didn't know where I was going with my life. You know, I, I mean, I was basically starting over. I, I knew schools wasn't gonna take me back to coach because as much as you try to keep it inconspicuous about your drug and drinking problems, <laughs> the world knows. So, um, I, I kind of started going back to some of the things that they taught me in rehab. Look, if you really wanted to, go volunteer, go do this, go do that. So I was in an outpatient program to make sure I, I kept my recovery working. And, and, and stayed, you know, true to all of the, the, the principles and all that I was taught in rehab, and and, 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 that, and that's helped me a lot. But what happened was I'm in this internship to try to become an addiction counselor, and I'm not making no money. So I run into a baseball coach at Rupal Middle School, Tony Alello, and he tells me, he's like, Gary, look, I got a kid. It was my first client, Jordan Sullivan. And uh, he's like, the kids, you know, he needs to pick up his speed a little bit, talk to his, his godfather, kind of takes him to practice and all. We can set you up with him, and, and if you can help the kid get a little quicker, you know, it might be something to help you draw in some extra money. So that was the first sign that, like, when you start putting that foot forward, God's going to put some people in your life that's going to help you do things. So I, I'm, I'm real grateful for Tony, and I'm real grateful for Jordan Sullivan. Um, so we started with Jordan. I started Fault One Agility Ladder, and uh, I started like that. And I, I was currently still volunteering at the boys' club, and they ended up giving me a little part-time job. And the guy that was running it was like, "Okay, you, you know, you, you could you could fit your training in there, and I'll still let you have the part-time job." People started to try to help me because they knew my story and they knew I was doing the right thing. So about, <clears throat> I guess. About two months into that whole situation, the summer of time was approaching, and the boys club was going to do a summer camp. But right when they were going to do the summer camp, it would have been a full-time job for me, $10 an hour. I'm like, everything's going great. When they changed directors, we had a little bit of difference of opinion, and he was like, look, I'm not going to be able to use you for the summer. So before I fell back into square one, I, I done had about three clients at this time now. And I was like, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna put my best foot forward with this training stuff. And it blew up. Uh, I did about two years in, in, the, in the playground. I, I used parks wherever I could set up, schools if I, if I could go to a school. And uh, fr from there, Eventually, it grew into something that was a little bigger than what that, that area could handle. So, or, or, the, or the parks would allow, I should say. So, it kind of pushed me into a situation where I was either going to find a real job or I was going to have to find a facility to base my business out of. And I found me and my fiance at the time happened to be driving past the building that was sitting in right now. And uh, she was like, if, if that is what you want, then that's what we're gonna do. And um, she made it happen. She, she really put everything that she had into uh, GLS. She basically gave up her career for me. <laughs> we, we decided to get the building. Um, I mean, we, 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 we built this place out of <laughs> blood, sweat, and tears. Um, didn't have anybody to say, hey man, here's a hundred grand. Go, go ahead and set yourself up. Now at the time, I, I probably had about 25 to 30 clients. So, you know, we, we had a little, a little money coming in. Um, and we just got credit cards, little small loans leases, anything that we, we could do to make it happen, we did. And uh, it kind of it kind of took off from there. Um, one, of, one of my trainers that was, I, well, I was training him was Clifford Harris. 
Uh, he, he's, a, he's a kid out of Higgins High School from the area, went to Duke, and, and just to tell, I mean, he probably had 30 offers, and, and he went to Duke University to further his career. So that that's what I loved about Cliff. Cliff, Cliff, Cliff is, um, he, he's, he's the guy that didn't go for the flash and, and didn't go for the, for the shine. And, and, and he put his education in front. He put what's going to happen after football in, in, in front. And Cliff, you know, we, 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 we pushed and pushed and pushed, and, and he just never got that break to make it to that level. Uh, he did a little overseas ball and stuff like that. But um, he, he, he became more or less my right-hand man in the business. And, and um, me and him worked, and uh, he, he went to school with, with Phil Green. Phil Green is, is my weight trainer now, and, and I'm gonna I'm go out on a limb right now. And t I'm gonna tell you, he's the best. He's uh, He's got a knack for building relationships with these kids, and he makes them work. They work for him. Uh, those two guys, the day in and day out operation of this place is, is it, they're as responsible for GLS as anyone. Um, and it, it, the work that they put in and, and the effort that they put forth with, um, with, with the kids is, is, is exceptional. Um, you know, I, 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 couldn't, I couldn't make it in this business without the two of them. He comes into GLS and they sit down, they bring their parent in and they come in to sign up. We sit down with them. They fill out the little information, if, you know, whatever their payment happens to be, they'll make a payment. And, and then they sign a, a contract with us. And that contract is, is, is basically, and, and, and I, could, I, could, I could read it out to you later, but the, the contract is that, that you're going to carry yourself as a young man or a young lady. You're going you're gonna, to you're gonna give us your social media accounts your usernames, we're gonna follow you and you're gonna hold yourself to, to you're gonna hold yourself accountable like a young man or a young lady should. Um, in my athletes, you know, a, a lot of times people's like, man, how do you get the kids to, 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 to listen to that or, or, or to follow with that? Man, my athletes, when we tell them these rules, <laughs> they'll pull the phone out and start coaches, this okay, is this okay? They want that. They want they want to be quality people. They want to be good good people. It's 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 some of the situations that's around them that tears them down and, and, and changes who they are. You know, people just aren't born bad and and, and are born in in, in in the troubled situations. We make decisions throughout the course of our life that change and dictate where we end up, and it's our decision. It's nobody else's decision. Nobody made me do drugs. Nobody, nobody made me lie, cheat, and steal. I chose to do those things. So when my athletes come in, they know my story. A lot of them know what, I, what I've been through. So when, when you know, I get a kid that comes in and he's got 24 offers and he's, he's got five SEC offers and we sit down in my office and I'm like, what's up with the ACT? You know, how's, 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 how's school right now? What's your GPA? What's going on with that? What coaches are talking to you? You know, we get in there, we get involved, we get personal with them, and we let them know that we're not gonna play games with them, but we're gonna be behind them 100%. And a lot of times, these kids are put in situations where people wanna help, but the kid takes it the wrong way. And I always tell my kids, look, every time I ask you a question, it's not an interrogation. I'm just trying to get some information. And, and, and they have a hard time distinguishing between being interrogated and actually somebody questioning them, trying to help them. And we want to make sure that we, we, we do everything that we can to help our athletes develop athletically in the classroom as, as citizens. You know, just just a, accountable young men and young ladies live in a society now that you know shoes and clothes and cars and all of the flash and all, all of that stuff is good, getting offers and all of this. But you know, I tell all my kids, I'm like, <laughs> how, how many? What's the ACT for every? If you get for every offer that you get, you get five points on your ACT. We all going D1. 
you know? So if, if, if my ACT's not right, I don't, I really don't need to be on Twitter posting that I got an offer. You know, I, I really don't, because cause what good is it going to do for me to have an offer to go to a university and I don't qualify to go to school there? We come in, the first thing that we do is a dynamic warm-up with our kids. And then, you know, I tell the kids we're going to loosen up on the ladder all the time, but the reason why we go on the ladder all the time is because that's what kicked this whole thing off. So we start off practice every day with it, or we start off their workouts every day with some agility work. It's good for their footwork. We do some dry phase stuff in it, some high knees and things like that, which, you know, and then it gets the kids good and loose before we get into any other program. Um, then, then we might do a plyometric circuit, or, you know, you got plyometric boxes. Uh, Phil works in the back with all of the weights and all of that. Um, like I said, best in the business. Uh, does a lot of flexibility, mobility, he does nutrition, he teaches the athlete how to protect their body. Uh, we do the Vertimax training, and you can see the Vertimax down here. Uh, we have different vendors that we use for nutrition, such as healthycourse.com, they, they do um, you know clean eating and stuff like that. We, we have, which they, they cater to a lot of our boot camp clients and, and things like that, ladies that's trying to lose weight. I'm actually been on the program for about eight weeks and just dropped like 17 pounds. Because uh, the last one that gets exercise is me. <laughs> so, but, um, so if we if we got a kid that comes in and, and he's, you know, in, in, in a situation where he's maybe hits a little plateau, he's not getting faster, or he has something going on, we, 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 we put him through a correctives program. Um, or some things we spot immediately off the back. Uh, and, and I'm gonna take y'all up front. When we get an athlete that we notice has an imbalance in their stride or has, has some kind of gait issue going on, a, uh, asymmetry or anything, you know, they could have a foot that's turned out the wrong way, a knee that's not pointing in the right direction, we bring them in here. My corrective coaches are, are Gilly Bosch and Dylan Richard. Uh, D uh, Gilly is, is certified through two different methods. A little background on Gilly. He had uh, three ruptured discs or three herniated discs in his back. He was about to have major surgery. And uh, he said, let me try an alternative route. And he went through uh, P.D. Goscue's um, course and he ended up finding relief that way. And now he's a triathlete. He's 50 years old. Uh, Dylan Richard is an LSU graduate in kinesiology. So the guys that do our correctives is not me. It's, 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 the, it's people that are educated and have certifications in what they're doing. So when we bring the athlete in, we basically kind of want to run down to them, you know, how they should look and what the body should look like and how they should be lined up. A lot of these injuries that we, we, we see today are because the athlete doesn't know how to protect their body. So we bring them in here, they, they come in with a parent if they can, and we do an evaluation on them, which we got the whiteboard, we got, um, let, me, let me catch this light. We, we put them in here, we make them do a couple of little different walks. Everything that we do with the athlete, we put on huddle. There's a huddle technique page, which is very similar to the huddle that you see their highlight films on. So the athlete could go over there and watch their, their progress as it's being made through the correctives program. So if we get a kid that's, let's say he's running a four or five and he's in high school and he's going to camps and he can't get below that four or five, he's in there, he's training hard. We, we, we have a, a high trainer treadmill, which we put them on, which, which shows us the imbalances in their stride. So if we see that the kid's dumping weight to the right side a little bit, it could be the difference between him running a four or five or running a four, four, seven, which now that looks a lot more attractive to a college coach. So. Uh, we, we, we've done a lot of work with different guys. All our pro day athletes, um, they all go through the correctives program. We straighten them up. We get, we get, that's the first thing that they do whenever they come in. We, 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 we put them through the correctives. If there's an a imbalance that they find in strength, or if there's a strength deficiency in the hamstrings, the glutes, or the lower back, we meet on a regular basis, my correctives coaches, myself, and my weight trainer, and we develop a program to get that kid unstuck. We call him he's stuck because he can't move a certain way. He's not very supple. He, he, he might not bend right. So we develop that program and we, we, we fix the problem. So the toughest part about the correctives is, is getting the athlete 
to come in here and do these boring exercises all the time. <laughs> so this is what we do. We bring them to the wall. This is the wall. So on the wall, you got Usain Bolt, Mo Ferret, Michael Johnson. This is some of the fastest athletes ever. Okay, if you look at them, elongated spine. We show them different, different uh, like comparisons. Michael Jordan, real smooth, real, 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 real finesse in the air. LeBron, he's the bully. He's gonna beat you up. One of them's externally rotated. One of them has a great gait pattern. And it's the difference between him finishing at the rim sometimes and, and throwing up that, why did LeBron miss a layup? So, I, li I like LeBron, he's all right. <laughs> and we, we just got some different examples. RG3 had a few knee surgeries. He, he hurt himself cutting on his knee. His knees collapsed when he goes in a squat. This is pictures from his pro day. And then we got just, you know, other athletes, Michael Jordan, Von Miller, guys that have these perfect gait patterns, Ed Reed. And, 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 and when we show them the consistencies in these athletes, they're like, okay, I, I need to be that guy. Like, that's what I'm shooting for. I need to do what they do. So that this is, this is something that we do. And the agreement that I have with the coaches that do it, I supply this to all my athletes at no charge. This is in their program. This is all part of their program. It, it, you know, it, it's, it's, you go a lot, a lot of different places you may go and they charge you for this, they charge you for that, they charge you for this. Now, if we got a kid that we give a corrective menu to and he don't follow through with it, then we'll refer to their parents that, or, or we, we will suggest that they come in and they buy sessions from the, uh, to make sure that we get that athlete right. But we give them the assessment and we'll do a every two week follow up. The, the, the workouts are really simple. It's nothing, I mean, you, you could, you know, we, he, he works with different guys. He, we do spine decompression here. Um, a, a bunch of different things to help people just, just get back to normal or relieve pain and, and things like that. Um, so let's go get that. Once we develop that program on what the athlete should have as far as, um, you know, correcting his gait pattern, it, we, we want to build his strength on a good frame. If um, you take a car that has a bad frame, you could put the best tires in the world on it, which, you know, the tires could be the training and the body could be the frame. If you put the, put the greatest tires in the world on it, they're gonna get destroyed. And eventually the frame's gonna fall apart. And that's what we wanna do. If my athletes, my pro guys, or um, my high school kids can't make it to the next level, if they can't play in college, that scholarship does them no good, they're gonna lose it. Longevity is the key to training, protecting the body. If you're gonna be an NFL guy, that second contract is the contract. It's not the first one. When you re-sign, that's, that's when you make your mark. Uh, collegiately, we got, I mean, I, 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 I could sit here and I don't wanna leave nobody out, right. but you know, we had a great, um, we, we've worked with Patrick Taylor, running back at Memphis. Uh, I do all of uh, Chase 4K's training at Nickel State. Uh, LaJon Harris, Scooter from, from uh, Arkansas comes in. Dwayne Eugene from Arkansas. Briston Gidry from Arkansas. Uh, Christian Fulton from uh, LSU. Jamal Pettigrew we've done work with from LSU. Uh, Derek also works with one of my idols in the business is, is Derek Joseph. I think everything that Derek does is great. Uh, definitely somebody that I, I watch everything that he does and try to model a lot of things that we do based off of Derek. Uh, he, he's one of the best in the business for sure. Um, so, I, I mean, I, Jared West, a running back at, at North, uh, Northwestern. Uh, I, I mean, we've had all oh, kind of, I, 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 I probably got 20 more kids that I'm leaving out that I, I'm, I'm sorry that I left y'all out, but it's, 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 a, it's a lot to name. Those guys come in, they know what the brand is. They know when they step foot in this building, I mean, you'll see the Twitter posts after. I should have known what I was walking into when I walked in there. And, 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 and that's, you know, we push them. We, we, we give them that mental test here and there. But uh, it, it's not always about that. It, it's, it's more about just giving them that place to come home to, to get the work in that they want to work. They come home, they, they like a brotherhood. 
you know uh I get calls all the time. I see one of your shirts. I've seen it here. And then they, some of them will hashtag the GLS thing or, or, or whatever. And it's like, oh, you had GLS? Yeah, I go there too. All right. So social media has been very, very good to us in the sense of getting our business out. I've done no other marketing besides giving some shirts out. And them kids, you know, we post all our offers and things like that. And when a kid does good in school, post that too, or if they get any kind of leadership awards, you know, outside of the classroom, we do that also.